Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about dysgraphia. I am Dr. Suresh Padadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about dysgraphia, what are the signs and symptoms, assessment and management of dysgraphia. Dysgraphia comes under specific learning disorder. Let's understand what is specific learning disorder. SLD is an umbrella term for a group of neurodevelopmental disorders that are typically diagnosed in early school age children, although it may not be diagnosed till the adulthood. They are characterized by persistent, that is very essential, that means it should be pervasive impairment in at least one of the following areas, that is reading, writing, mathematics or combination of both. Specific learning disorder in which the normal pattern of skill acquisition are disturbed from the early stages of development. There are three important SLD categories have been included in DSM-5 and ICD-11 diagnostic system. That is dyslexia, dysgraphia and dyscalculia. With regard to dyslexia and dyscalculia, we have made a separate video. video. Please subscribe to my channel and watch them. As I mentioned, I'll be discussing about dysgraphia in this video. Dysgraphia is a term used to describe difficulties with putting one thoughts on the paper. As you know, there is a huge difference or millions of miles difference between the thought process and communication either by saying or writing. Saying may be to some extent difficulty. Difficulty is there. But however, writing becomes much more difficulty. Dysgraphia is a disorder of writing ability, including problems with letter formation, legibility, letter spacing, spelling, grammar, punctuation, fine motor coordination, rate of writing, handwriting, and composition. Many a time, although there is a dysgraphia, they may not be able to even understand what they are writing. Let's understand dysgraphia. Dysgraphia makes it difficulty for a person to form letters in writing. Difficulty in acquiring writing skills despite sufficient learning opportunity and cognitive potential. That means the child is bright, above average or average, but there is problem in writing. Children with dysgraphia may also use the wrong word for what they are trying to communicate. That means when they write, there will be mistakes and also they may not be able to understand they have done the mistake. Illegible handwriting is the commonest sign of dysgraphia. It is also possible to have a neat handwriting in dysgraphia but it may take long time and lot of effort to write neatly or other by like compared to others. That means it is a laborious process of writing. There may be awkward grip or else body position when writing. They tire easily when they write. They take two to three times the time which is done, taken by the normal kids. For example, if a child writes that in five minutes, a child with dysgraphia will take 20 to 30 minutes. Incorrect spelling, capitalization may be wrong, mix of cursive and print letters, inappropriate sp spacing, sizing of letters, using wrong capital letters, small alphabets, difficulty in copying words, slow or labelled writing, omitting letters, adding letters or maybe difficulty in formation of sentences, difficulty in visualizing words before writing them, unusual body or hand position when they are writing, tightening the pen very tightly and that many of time they talk about holding the pen with difficulty or pain in the hand after writing for 10 to 15 minutes because they are holding the pencil very tight. That means they will be clutching the pen. They will have pain in the fingers and hands. Watching your hand while they write, that means they will not be able to look here and there when they write. Saying words aloud while writing is another symptom of dysgraphia. Avoiding writing or also drawing task. Written letters are poorly formed, inversed, reversed or else inconsistently spaced. Difficulty in staying within the margins 
when they write difficulty with word finding difficulty in writing forming organization and consistent thought difficulty with sentence comp completion difficulty with written comprehension difficulty with written syntax and written grammar and it is not duplicated with oral tasks many a time the child what it has written it is unable to read them it is a classical when you ask a person if he has what he has written can he read it that will be a classical dysgraphia can be seen let's look into the standardized writing writing assessment tools there are various tools have been standardized especially for english language such as minnesota handwriting assessment evaluation tool of children's handwriting scales of children's readiness in printing detailed assessment of speed of handwriting beery development tool or test of visuo motor integration so various assessment tools have been used and before you assess dysgraphia first and the foremost know how the child has reached you that is a reason for consultation what is the timing of consultation whether the child has any comorbidity so please identify the comorbidity treat the comorbidity it may be depression it may be separation anxiety social phobia identify this and treat them before you go for assessment a reasonable degree of accommodative measures remedial measures to be done within 6 months if the child improves that means it is not persistent pervasive here then the assessment can be done assessment as can be formal or informal formal use basically sld assessment tool can be used now moving to intervention massive awareness program has to be done for the parents school teachers and also education policy makers next the parents need to accept the child school authorities need to accept the child they should not reject the child and throw the child out of the school so that the child finds a difficulty in adapting into the new environment that should not happen making sure the child does not drop out of the school all possible mechanism to be utilized to accommodate the child within the environment that means the intervention has three important categories accommodation where the student access the mainstream of education curriculum with supportive or assistive resources without changing the educational content that means the child remains within the same school all accommodative measures will be done the next will be modification where the school adapts the student's goal and objective as well as provide services to reduce the effect on the disability that means here the modification of the goal will be done here the child need not write the exam oral exam can be done that means you have modified the goal further you need to consider remedial measures remedial measures should be done in the school and the home in the first if it is severe <clears throat> then only you need to consider the professional help accommodation as i mentioned specific devices may be utilized such as larger pencil grip special grips paper with raised lines to be provided for tactile feedback extra time can be given to those children and also technological accommodation such as automated spell checks voice to text recognition software tablets and computers should be used so that the child is not left behind computer assistance can be considered or digital technology can be considered for assisting the child oral response can be recorded rather than writing teachers can opt to scale down the larger written assignment to smaller one providing scribes can be considered for dysgraphia children remedial measure can be considered as tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 tier 1 occurs at the school where extra classes will be taken time will be given more for these children and accommodative measures will be there within the class and remedial measures also occurs within the class tier 2 is basically both at the school at the home should be considered once in a while assistance from the professionals can be taken tier 3 here the child is very severely affected hence the professional help will be taken for remedial measures not only that the remedial measure should continue at the school at, at the home and also weekly twice or thrice thrice 
remedial measure by the professionals to be, should be taken. The parents need to understand one thing here. Remedial measure lasts for one to three years depending upon the child's speed of recovery. At the same time, here the remedial measure is to accommodate the child or make the child so that it is able to pass the exam. Don't think that by applying remedial measure, the child will become hold a first rank in the class. No, don't expect that. And remedial measure will take one to three years. Although the child has dysgraphia, you have made some attempts. From severe, the, the severity may decrease to moderate. Very rarely the dysgraphia disappears. That means it's a neurodevelopmental disorder. It is a lifelong problem. Writing is a complex skill. One need to understand that. Eye and coordination should be formed. Hence, using clay, weeding, finger tapping, various other methodology should be used so that the fine motor skills are well developed. Dysgraphia often coexists with dyslexia, maybe even dyscalculia. And phenome awareness is an essential phonic instruction, alphabetical writing, letter writing, numbered arrows cues should be used, various games to write letter using digital technology should be considered. That is one of the commonest method where dysgraphia can be, remedial measure can be attempted. Using maps, square boxes, writing in the line assignments can be done, using, using virtual reality apps, apps to train the child in writing can be done. Writing essays, copying, writing independently, editing, correcting and also planning to write, organizing, executing the writing essay to be considered so that the child understands what it has written and it will also learns to read and also write it. You can find certain resources in these websites for dysgraphia. These are valuable resources and also you can find certain applications which are available in the market. Those can also be used at home to overcome dysgraphia. To conclude, my dear friends, regardless of the presenting symptoms, early diagnosis and intervention should be started. Screening of comorbid medical condition, psychiatric conditions clearly indicates it's a neurodevelopmental disorder. Hence, identifying those comorbidities to be done and treated aggressively. Specific learning disorder often improves with treatment, re treatment but frequently persist for lifelong and also into the adulthood. Hence, remember this. It is not the child. It is the brain should be blamed for having faulty connection or else difficulty in migration of these neurons, pruning of the neurons or else neuronal plasticity should be blamed, not the child. Don't discriminate the child. Don't blame the child who has SLD. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.